guys, Heckaloose here. I am here at the Ultimate Brick Show here in Marion, Illinois with Noah, and he has this Clone Wars diorama right here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what made you want to create this. Alright, so I'm Noah. I've been a Lego builder for since I was eight years old, and I've always had the Star Wars passion ever since I was that young. And so, you know, when I discovered Lego and Star Wars when I was nine years old, I was like, this is perfect. So, um, I decided to create the Battle of Felucia because it's a battle that doesn't really get talked talked about a lot. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely very unique in terms of the plant life and everything. So, I wanted to make it just because it's just, you know, something new out there. There's a lot of pops, there's a lot of Lucifers, oh. everything. So, this is like something new. I'm the type that just wants to make my own planet. Like an OC planet. Oh, yeah. Like a weird, hellish battle going on. So tell us about the plants and how did you build them? So um, the plants, so we'll start from smallest to largest. So the, this is literally just two pieces. It's supposed to represent kind of a mushroom on Felucia. So that's the red one. Then you have these ones, which have the large cones and then the small cones. These kind of represent those uh, taller orange plants. Then we have the tall... Uh, flexible plants here and uh, basically kind of using a little bit of a legal building technique here but uh <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how yeah. you got that all stacked up. Yeah, so um, it's a hose piece in the middle, and then you got the little stud in the middle to represent the center of the plant. And then you have these half dome pieces, which are from the Winter Village uh, toy shop sets. Aren't they the exact same ones from uh, they use for Sandy and the old SpongeBob sets? Yeah, correct. How did you manage to get that through there? I didn't. Oh wait, I kind of see the gap it, in between. Yeah, so there's a connection point at the bottom, so I was able to do that and then they, you just leave the top open and you can do that. And then the nice thing about them is you can bend them. Oh, yeah. So you can make them however you want. <laughs> All right, so what about these big plants right here? Um, oh yeah, so this big plant. Um, so this took about a month or two to prototype and uh, basically the idea came from me just looking at the Bad Bat shuttle set and realizing that the shape of the cockpit piece is um, very similar to like a tulip. And so uh, my idea was I'm going to do the whole thing around that design. And so I built up around it. I have some techniques here. You can even see that kind of how that works. It's a, it's a pretty crazy technique. And then I just put studs on top, the plant, and then you got the little stem right there. So what was the hardest thing out of all of this? Um, I would say either the blue plants or the hill. So the hill, I think all together took about 20 days to scope to one uh, about one hour each day. And it's just layer after layer. If you look at the side of the build, you can see all the layers of plates. And so, especially as you get up here into this side, you can really see all the layers. And yeah, I've done something similar to this in my brick films, like in my intro for my YouTube channel, I made like a mountain thing mm -hmm. out of like reddish brown plates. That was for the big part, because oh, it kept yeah. on brittling and stuff. Yeah. I also see you have an ACOT, and I've never seen this set in person. Yeah, it's so... It's like the holy grail of the Clone Wars set. Oh, yeah. I actually just bought that recently from a friend of mine, uh, along the drop ship, drop ships at home. But I decided to bring along the uh, ATOT just because it's something I didn't envision in the Fuchsia mock at first, but it's definitely something if I build Fuchsia again, oh, well, I'll want to include an ATOT. I definitely should re-release this set. But one thing I can't understand about this mock, this is just my opinion, a hyena bomber could literally bombard the top of these clones and destroy the entire wall for oh, yeah. the troops. That don't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you got a bunch of battle droids. How much did this cost to, to prepare? Um, like the whole build all together? Yeah, like the clones, the vehicles. I'd say three grand or four grand. <clears throat> wow. It's, uh, so some of these pieces, like the uh, uh, old pieces here, each half is, was cost me 83 cents. So you take all those, that's already like hundred, two hundred dollars there. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. And anything else you want to say? Yeah, uh, keep building, guys. Don't, don't stump your creativity. Keep going. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. My name.
name is Sackaloos, and this has been an interview at the Ultimate Rec Show here in Marion, Illinois. And I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and do you have any social medias you want to shout out? Yes. Uh, follow at It's Cosmic Rick. So there's a QR code right here. All the series. So Instagram at It's.CosmicRicks. Alrighty, thank you. Are you tired of constantly removing dust from your Lego sets? Well, I might have the solution for you. Introducing Clean My Bricks, a micro vacuum that is specifically designed to dust off Lego sets. Now let's open this up and I'll demonstrate what the Clean My Bricks vacuum does to your Lego sets. Now I'm going to show you guys a demonstration on how the Clean My Bricks vacuum works. I'm going to use the TIE Striker set from Rogue One, mostly the wings of it, as an example of how Clean My Bricks can remove dust from your Lego sets. There. Now it looks like it's just been built straight from the box. I would like to give a huge thank you to Clean My Bricks for giving me this vacuum to review. If you want to get 10% off your purchase on this vacuum, use code HECA60.